Hey everyone, and welcome to World Heritage Journey. Today, we're at the archaeological site of Philippi in northern Greece. So I'm standing right now in the ruins of ancient Philippi, a settlement that's existed since the Bronze Age, but it really changed in 356 BC when King Philip II of Macedon captured it and took it as his own, naming it after himself in the process. Now there's plenty of interesting ruins here and it's connected with some of the most famous names in all of ancient history. Let's have a look around. So there's three main periods in the recorded history of the city. The Greek period, the Roman period, and the Christian period. So the Greek period started in 356 BC when Philip II of Macedon recognized the strategic importance of the city and its lucrative gold and silver mines and conquered it for himself. Now King Philip was the father to a man named Alexander who later went on to become known to history as Alexander the Great. The best remains we have of this period is of course the Greek theatre and it's in pretty good condition though it's not quite as dramatic as some of the other Greek theatres we've seen here in Greece. There was also a few other ruins here, there's an Acropolis up on top of the hill overlooking the old city, though not that much of it is left these days. So I'm standing now in the centre of the Roman Forum, the great marketplace and meeting area in every Roman town. And Philippi became a Roman town in the Macedonian Wars around 160 BC when it was conquered by the Romans. But not much is known of its early Roman history. It doesn't really pop up again until 42 BC where one of the most significant events in all of Roman history took place just outside the walls. After the assassination of Julius Caesar, two armies, one army led by his heirs, Octavian and Mark Antony, and the other led by Caesar's assassins, Cassius and Brutus, faced off just outside the city. The army led by Octavian and Mark Antony carried the day, and from that point onwards, Rome was an empire. The Republic was no more. Philippi during the Roman period was wealthy and flourishing. It still had its natural resources like the mines. It was on the main road, the Via Ignatia, that went between Rome and the eastern provinces. And it was constantly being settled by veteran soldiers from the legions of Emperor Octavian, now known as Augustus. And as the course of Roman history wound on, eventually it became a Christian empire. And suddenly Philippi was even more important because of something that had happened centuries earlier. In around AD 49 or 50, the Apostle Paul had visited here and preached the gospel in the forum and he was thrown in jail for his troubles before making a miraculous escape. And here in Philippi, right behind me in fact, underneath the ruins of this 6th century Christian church, is actually the remains of the first ever Christian church built on European soil. And apparently also the spring just outside the city is where the first ever baptisms on European soil took place as well. So it was a very, very important early Christian centre and that lasted for several hundred years. But as they say, nothing lasts forever. And in the 7th century AD, Philippi was hit by a massive earthquake that levelled many of the buildings. It hung on for another few centuries after that, but conflicts with other local tribes and uh, states meant that eventually it was completely deserted by around the 14th century. And I have to say, it's probably not the most spectacular ruin we've seen here in Greece, but for its connections to the characters of ancient history, we have people like Augustus and Alexander the Great, the Apostle Paul. It's just really, really evocative and it's just been so interesting to walk around and see where these people lived and made their names. But that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. 
Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more from the World Heritage Journey. I'll see you next time.